Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm almost since today we'll review the 10th studio album by the band Fleetwood Mac. Their self titled album Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, I am a fan of this band. I like them. I think I kind of grew out of them. You know, I was kind of into them, you know, early in my life. And then later I was like, oh, they're a great band, you know, I love them. And now I'm just kind of like, you know, they're good, but kind of boring in my opinion that's kind of my you know that's my opinion not really kind of that that is just my opinion uh not to say that i love some of their songs you know uh fucking you know basically everything from the rumors album fucking going your own way and the chain that's my favorite right there uh dreams you know a lot of classic songs on that album um and this album isn't really any different from that I think that some people prefer this album, but you know, most people of course prefer Rumors. Rumors. The only reason you would prefer this or Tusk is basically, oh, it's overrated or it's, you know, it's too mainstream for, for, for my taste. So, you know, not to say that it is too mainstream, I love it all. So, yeah, you know, the, the only people that, you know, cite this as a favorite or Tusk is that mainstream hipster kind of thing but uh you know i don't think that you can really discredit this album either um you know there's albums in between rumors are great too self-titled is you know kind of their real debut album if you will not to, dis not to dismiss their other nine albums with you know the mill singer i know the history of flu max so i'm not going to deny that and definitely classic stuff there Definitely, you know, also pretty good rock music, but Fleetwood Mac became legendary with their second self-titled album, so there you go. Released in 1975, uh, Fleetwood Mac was really a 70s band because they released, you know, up until this point, this album, Rumors and Tusk in the 70s, and then I believe a live album, Chicago or something, I think. Then, you know, they had a falling out, some 80s albums, and then the band just kind of ended, I suppose. So, this is definitely kind of a kind of trouble band, kind of controversial as in discography wise. But I do think that these are great uh, songwriters or just a great band in general. Yeah, we have 11 tracks on here. I don't think I'm going to talk about all of them, but just, you know, the songs that I think, oh, these are interesting. I think that the album started off pretty nicely with uh, Monday Morning, written and sung by Lindsay Buckingham. And I believe, oh no, 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 I was like, did she write the, you know, the famous landslide as well, but no. Oh uh, yeah, very nice melancholic way to start off the album. I really enjoyed it. Just very melancholy, very chill, brief to listen to, and just a great, easy, relaxing opening song, you know, which uh, arguably their whole discography is really you know soft rock so you know nothing wrong with that i love some soft rock music like fluid max so you know you can't go wrong with that in my opinion at least um another song that really sparked my interest was blue letter i think that this was a very deep and encapsulating song kind of interesting that the song was written by michael curtis and richard curtis um are those actually band members or are, they, or are those just like studio session writers or whatever? Yeah, I think I think that the Curtis brothers are not in the band. No, they're not. So this song is written by like industry plans or whatever before that was a thing, you know. So, you know, there's that. Um, yeah, definitely a great song. Really love the songwriting here. I think that these guys did a fine job of creating a great flu Fleetwood tune. Uh, yeah, really enjoyable. I really liked it. The title was great, so yeah, not a great song. You can't, you can't go wrong with Rhiannon, of course. Classic, classic song. Uh, written by Nix and sung by Nix. Stevie Nix. Yeah, just a great kind of like power, um, you know, powering invoking women's song you know women power whatever girl power shit like that um yeah this is a finely written pop rock tune really in tune really well written really well established by stevie nicks she really makes it her own uh which is really like strong and dependent so i really enjoy that 
Um, yeah, I didn't really care for Over My Head too much. That was written by Christine McVie. I suppose the C stands for Christine. Oh yeah, I was, I was, I was right as well, fucking no, Christine McVie. There you go, I didn't really care for that song all that much. Uh, Crystal I really liked, it was actually written by Stevie Nicks and sung by Buckingham, do, do it over what you will. Really nice kind of mi mystique kind of song, I do really like this one. I think that, you know, um, it isn't that classic Fluo Max style, but at the same time it's still, you know, uh, kind of interesting and haunting, not to say that the band is not interesting, but I'm kind of saying, you know, the band can sometimes kind of bore me a little bit, but I think that they definitely closed out the site very appropriately in their soft rock roots, while still maintaining my interest with, you know, the interesting songwriting and the nice composition behind it. And, you know, naming your song Crystal kind of works too, because I'm, I'm intrigued with interesting titles and this song is definitely one of them. Mm, yeah, you know, I tend to kind of slip away from Christine's writing with Say You Love Me, don't really care about her song, I think it's her, Christine. Or say it's another Lindsay Buckingham kind of thing where you have a girl's name but you're a guy, you know, unfortunate man, fucking no, Lindsay. Damn, um, yeah, so didn't really care for that song that much, kind of started, started out the album or the side two a bit weekly in my opinion and overall didn't really leave a lasting impression on me. Then we have of course the classic landslide song which is um, you know an iconic song three minutes long. Um, I've been afraid of changes because I've built my life around you. You know it's said differently in a bit of a slower tone and a bit more emotion you know. You can definitely say that again. But I do think that this is a very iconic Fleetwood song. This is one of our most iconic hits. Um, I'm, I might play this on acoustic one day if I can fucking play the guitar. So there you go, great song. Um, might want to cover it someday. It is a really great song, so definitely a favorite of mine. Yeah, and then you know, uh, the album kind of gets weak in my opinion after Landslide. I think that the album really just. Eh, just kind of took a sour turn for me and you know more Christine McVie songwriting by the way I don't hate Christine McVie I just don't I just don't think her songwriting is interesting I'm gonna check if Christine McVie is actually a fucking girl like I'm saying her her all the time but, you know it's a fucking dude probably so there you go oh no 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 she is a girl there you go I'm, I'm just not compelled by her songwriting I don't hate her but I just don't, don't think our songwriting is interesting. I'm way more compelled with the CV next tune, so there you go. So, um, yeah, world, turn, world Turning and Sugar Daddy. I think a World Turning is just kind of like, you know, eh. Didn't really care for it, to be honest. You know, it's kind of cliche and bugged down. It's not per se a bad song. I, I still think it's good, but it's definitely one of the like weakest tracks of the album. And Sugar Daddy is really just bad I think you know just not good really passe just kind of boring uh, solely written and sung by Christy McVie I really don't want to hate her but this is a pretty bad song so yeah nah take it or leave it this is my least favorite track on the album and then we get I'm so afraid and this was a kind of pleasant closing track uh, written by Lindsay Buckingham sung by him as well so this was a pretty appropriate nicely kind of middle ground kind of song you know not not too in your face but still kind of in that Fleetwood Mac style but not too soft either so I think that Lindsay Buckingham really strikes a perfect middle ground with this track not, not necessarily a favorite of mine and there are still a lot of songs on there that I really love so those are definitely my favorites if you've paid attention so there you go those are definitely my favorites if you didn't understand that because my speaking is incoherent as well there you go that's my review of this album i really like this album i think it's a classic i don't think it's flawless though um i think that this you know sugar daddy and world turning didn't really care didn't really care for warm ways was kind of awkward oh and I didn't even look at the fucking writing uh, credits, and Christy McVie wrote it a song as well. 
I really don't want to hate this woman, but I just, I'm just not compelled by her songwriting. I'm, I'm sorry, but I just don't care. Um, I do kind of like Overmad, though, so there you go. And that's a good song. So, um, you know, I love Monday Morning, Blue Letter, Rhiannon, Crystal, Landslide, and I'm So Afraid was pretty good. Yeah, so I'm basically like avoiding all the Christian movies, so I'm fucking gone. Uh, I still think this album is like somewhere around a nine, you know, it's still a really great album. The songs that are not good or, you know, weaker are not bad. They're just not as good as the as the best songs on there. So I'm going to give this album a 9.2. I think it's really great. Um, if only Christy McVie didn't write. She, she not, again, she's not a bad songwriter. I like her, but I just don't. I'm just not compelled by her songwriting. It just doesn't interest me. So there you go. That's, that's my review. Like and subscribe to the channel for future lives, man. Let me know what you think about this band album and uh, this review. And I'll see you in the next video. And I'm gonna change my fucking litter box because it's well, it stinks fucking terrible here. But this was a great album. But Jesus fucking Christ. Later.